Hey everyone, it's Caleb with the Antique Book Collective, and today I'm going to be going over where do I shop for books. So right off the bat, I'm just going to list off the places because I hate the videos that they just draw it out. So right off the bat, first place I like to go to is Goodwill Outlet. That's where I do a whole lot of my shopping. Uh, next place I go to is Estate Sales. Again, that's where I do a whole lot of my shopping. And third place is Friends of the Library Sales. Again, that's where I do a whole lot of my shopping. So I do have a bonus at the end because I do see why people do that and this bonus isn't where I shop, but where I don't shop. So you'll have to sit tight for that one, but let me just dive right on in. So first off, Goodwill Outlet. For me, I like Goodwill Outlet because that's where I get like my premium books, the books that I sell for like a buttload of money sometimes. So I've had one book that I bought at Goodwill Outlet. I bought it uh, at my Goodwill Outlet. You pay $2 and some change for hardcover books. So I bought it for $2 and I sold it for $1,600. I actually could have done a whole lot more. There are people that have this particular book for, I think the highest I saw was $13,000. Uh, same book, literally same book. Uh, but I just wanted to take the money that I knew I could get. And again, I only paid $2. So I was like, well, I, I'm per perfectly happy with a multiple of that kind of much, sorry, that much money on uh, return. So I went for that. Uh, so Goodwill Outlet, it's a great place uh, to get a whole lot of books for dirt cheap. The uh, bad side about Goodwill Outlet is that there are other people going through the books. Uh, there are a lot of uh, Goodwill Outlets. A lot of the employees actually go through the books beforehand because Goodwill has their own website where they sell books of their own. So uh, usually those books are all like books that are newer than the 70s because they can just scan the ISBN number. But uh, there are occasionally older books that they grab, uh, from what I'm told. I haven't seen that personally, and that is why my antique book business does so well at Goodwill Outlets, is because there's no one else grabbing these books, usually, for me. Uh, I have seen people grabbing old uh, mass market paperbacks. I've seen people grabbing old Bibles, old Dr. Seuss books, that sort of thing. But not antique books in general, which is what I uh, specialize in, is just antique books in general. Uh, so that is the shtick for uh, Goodwill Outlet. Uh, highly recommended, but not normal Goodwill stores. Uh, it's good. Goodwill Outlet, also called The Bins by people. I'm sure there's one near you if you live in the U.S. Uh, my business is all in the U.S., so that's all my experience. But yeah, Goodwill Outlet, The Bins, is the place to go for antique books. Next place that I like to go to for getting books for my antique book business is estate sales. Uh, I have said in the past that I do garage sales as well, but that's not entirely 100%. Like, I do do garage sales when I have a chance, and if I think that they have good uh, stuff, like on Craigslist, they post pictures sometimes, so you get to poke through, look at all the different things, you know, be like, oh, that looks like an old book there, and that one there, or, ooh, that looks like a first edition set of, say, Harry Potter, and Harry Potter first editions sometimes are worth something. Generally, not as much because it's a newer thing, but you guys go get what I'm going for. Uh, so estate sales, unlike garage sales, uh, estate sales are for older people generally. Uh, they are from people that have a lot of stuff sometimes. Uh, a lot of the people that I've really enjoyed the estate sales of uh, just have some amazing books. And it's sort of fun to go through their stuff because it's like, wow, you can see the life they lived through the books that they have. But I love going through estate sales because you have access to not just a few books someone wants to throw away, like you have at a garage sale, but of this person's like personal collection of books. And generally, people treat their personal collections that they keep their whole lives very well. So estate sale books, I find, are normally a whole lot nicer than Goodwill Outlet books because Goodwill Outlet books, like literally, they throw them into a bin, and then they throw them on a conveyor, and then it falls into another bin, and it's just like... I've gotten so many books that are, like, torn apart. Uh, they have their covers ripped off, all sorts of stuff. So when I find a book that doesn't have a cover, I actually go and try to find the cover, and then I can reattach it. Uh, I've done a whole bunch of stuff to figure out book repairs. I'm not the best book repairer, but I can do it. Uh, but back to estate sales really quick. Um, the great thing about estate sales is, again, the books are really nice condition. And on top of that, generally, uh, people hire out private companies, or it's just the family selling all the items and they don't want to keep the items that's why they're selling them so generally you can talk people down on price goodwill outlet you can't talk people down on price uh, but estate sales you normally can uh, generally i don't find that the books are priced way out there like i've paid between five cents and a couple dollars for books 
uh, and estate sales again because the books are so nice it's like well I'm perfectly willing to pay a couple dollars for this book because I know I can get a whole lot more and it's such a beautiful well-kept book uh, the other things about estate sales is you do have to do a lot more driving than Goodwill Outlet so Goodwill Outlet uh, for mine uh, we have the bins and I want to say it's eight bins and these bins of books are uh, probably four feet wide and about eight feet long so in that it's about this thick of books so we're talking tens of thousands of books estate sales unlike that you might find 200 books if someone's a big book person like for me personally I think I have more books than that of just my own personal collection because I'm a big reader but that's sort of what you should expect for estate sales is there's less books but the quality is higher uh, something else about estate sales is because it's generally older people that you're getting the estate sale books from is older people have older books generally because these people have been collecting books their whole life so if someone's 80 years old that means they might have a book that's 80 years old or older it really uh, varies but that's just what I found is older people estate sales generally have the older books not everyone that's old is a reader which always makes me sad when I see estate sales that are going on and it's like oh you don't have any books that makes me so sad I mean you have all these other collectible things what do you do but it's like you don't have any books like for me I've heard this about a lot of people actually like when you see someone else with books there's like this sense of tribalism and it's like oh you're you're my people you know when you see other books so that's just something I sort of like doing when I do do estate sales as well is just like yes I I like this person uh but yeah there's that whole thing you can get great prices for great books but problem is there's less books than what you get at a Goodwill outlet and the third place is friends of the library sales so friends of the library sales it is like absolutely insane so you might be able to get a huge variety of books like tens of thousands I've been to some that I would say there's at least 50,000 books or more maybe a hundred thousand I actually don't know because there were so many books at this one that I went to up in Washington it was actually like my jaw dropped when I went in there because I've never seen so many books but you can have that many books that you're just shocked or at friends of the library sales you can walk in and there's like one dozen books one table of books and it's not very thrilling so something really nice is the website that I use to find uh, the friends of the library sales it actually tells you roughly how many books the people think they have Usually, I personally try to like multiply that number by five because people don't normally count the books. They just throw out a number, and it's normally like five times less than what's actually there. So that's something you might want to do. Uh, it really depends, but there's either a whole lot of books or not a lot. Uh, I find it generally lands somewhere in the middle. Like most of the Friends of the Library sales that I go to and have gone to repeatedly, I find 5,000, 10,000 books roughly. Um, there's one that I love going to and I actually for a long long time went there every single month because it was a monthly sale uh, and they had probably 5,000 to 10,000 books and that's sort of for me the sweet spot of not a whole lot of other people are gonna go there and it's just enough books to make sure that you actually find something worthwhile uh, that's just me though and uh, for friends of library sales on top of that so we have pricing so pricing it can be just like estate sales really low or maybe a couple dollars I don't think I've ever paid over five dollars for a book at a friends of library sale uh, prices are normally very nice and just like estate sales you can talk people down on prices usually it really depends on the uh, friends of the library sale I've been to some that the person's like oh yeah sure you can take this whole bag for a dollar and then I've been to other ones that it's like no you can't get a deal on this I'm like okay okay I'm, I'm sorry I just thought about it no one else was buying it sorry and sometimes they get really aggressive about that I don't really understand but uh, something really cool about friends of library sales is that those proceeds go to the library that you're buying them from usually and for me I think that's really cool because when money goes to the library that means more books can be bought which means there are more readers in the future and for me one of the reasons why I do antique book business is I like books in general I like antique books especially but just books in general I love reading I'm a big reader in fact I'm an author as well I write books uh, but yeah so those are the three places that I shop for books usually uh, of course there are occasional places that I go as well on top of that um, I have friends give me books sometimes those books aren't normally very good even if it's textbooks it's sometimes like eh. but yeah Goodwill Outlet estate sales friends of the library sale and uh, finally for you guys bonus where don't I shop for books so there's actually a long list of places that I do not shop for books and I don't recommend anyone shop for books if they want to do an antique book business like I do and first off 
bookstores. Don't go to a bookstore because those people are book people and they know the value of books. And sometimes they probably are willing to overcharge you for those books because they think that the book has so much more value. So I have walked into some bookstores that I'm like, oh man, I can, I'm so excited. I can't wait to look around. And this was when I first started my business. And I'm looking through these books and I'm like, this person wants $30 for this book and I can, at the top, sell it for 15 you know? So, like, they can charge this much and if you sold it for the highest you could, it could be this much. Now, of course, there are chances that they are charging this much and you can sell it for this much, but that's just something that I haven't found personally and these bookstores normally have so many books. A lot of them are newer books and for me, I don't have the profit margin on newer books that I have on older books. I'm going to have a link to that video in the future uh, of antique books versus new books pricing and profit margins. I'll link that in the end, probably somewhere up there. Uh, but yeah, bookstores, big no-no for me. Uh, next place is antique stores. So antique stores are basically the same exact thing as bookstores in my experience. So it's people that understand antiques, understand their value, and oftentimes overcharge wildly for these things. So you can go into antique stores. Uh, I recommend you check out all the ones nearest to you just to see what you got. And um, you can go in, you can look around and be like, hey, I can get good money on this one, this one, this one. Or you can walk in and be like, oh, wow, they want $100 for this book and I can sell it for $5. You understand? Uh, it varies between each place, who runs the place. So it really matters if you get, can get plugged into your local businesses especially if you can get plugged into your local estate sale companies like reach out to them and be like hey if you guys ever have books so that's just pro tip right there and uh finally the last place that i have personally started going to less uh, as i run my business is like rich people places so i'm talking boutique stores but even friends of the library bookstores if it's in a rich person district they charge a whole lot more money there and yes there is still money to be made sometimes but oftentimes since uh, the people running the place are so used to having wealthy people go in that have money to burn. I don't see a lot of profit to be made for me personally. These books normally are going to collectors who go out and buy these things already. So just a little tip right there is you might want to avoid rich people places for stores. Now for estate sales, you might be able to make out in a huge way at estate sales for rich people. I have made a lot of money on it. Not as much as I've made at Goodwill Outlet, which I think is sort of funny, but uh, Goodwill Outlet, I think the reason why it's sort of leaning in Goodwill Outlet's favor is just because I've had a few books that I've made so much money on. So I hope that really helps you guys. So again, Goodwill Outlet, estate sales, friends of library sales, those are where you should shop. And then there's some places that you shouldn't shop. And honestly, this is something that you can figure out on your own. It's something you should figure out on your own. But if you're just starting, you might want to just hit the places that I outlined for where you should go because that's where I've had my luck and that's where I've heard so many people nationwide have had a whole lot of luck. So I hope that really helps you guys. I'd love for you guys to follow my page on Facebook and follow the community group that I've created. I'm going to have links to those in the description. And if you need to buy any products uh, for your book business, I would love, love, love if you'd go to my Facebook page and hit some of my affiliate links because that's how I get paid to keep this channel running. So I hope that really helps you guys. Help me save some books from going to the dump because that's where they go if we don't get them and save them.